What it is, y'all? It's your old boy Pilk, and a lot of you guys have asked me to rate the anniversary units that we just got in Dan Mimo. Uh, we now the thing is, the anniversary is pretty much done. By the end of Wednesday, you got to have your heroic trials done. You got to have the stories done and all that stuff. I would really recommend, guys. I'm gonna blow about 300, uh, 300 potato snacks a day. Uh, 100 on each one of the stories just so I get a lot of those CP items out. That's gonna be the best way to do this um, I know it's very time-consuming I also know that it's a lot of potato snacks that a lot of people don't have but I started it yesterday I'm gonna end it uh, tomorrow. That means that each and every single day. I'm blowing well all days to together I'm blowing about 900 potato snacks on just unit upgrades, but I think it's going to be worth. I think the CP levels we're going to get out of them are absolutely worth. Remember, you can farm them up through the gotcha. So it really, the, uh, the the event gotcha. So it really makes it worthwhile. Now, that out of the way, you got to finish up everything ASAP. But if you have units left over that are not maximum broken, who do you need to maximum break? Who's the most important? Now, I've put everyone in here up through the current uh the, the current episodes of the anime. Now, I don't have the new units that we just got, and you could probably address like how important those units are going to be going forward. But we'll talk about that in tomorrow's Before You Summer video. For now, we'll talk about everybody we have current, including the anime units. And the way I'm going to rate this, the number one way I'm going to rate this is because I'm going to look at units and say, okay, how useful are they? Not only like how good are they in war game, how good are they in Record Buster. Overall, is this a unit you're going to use all the time, or are they going to be specialized for a specific situation. What am I talking about? Well, there's a reason I have a Haruhime tab up there because the new Haruhime is a unit that is absolutely mandatory. If you do not have her maxed, you're missing out. You've got to max this unit. You really absolutely must max Haruhime. There's just no two ways about that. Now, on that note, I've also talked a little bit about the new Aisha. Now, unfortunately, I, I didn't get her down here. I haven't added her to this. But Aisha would honestly go in the uh, the meh tab. She's not a disappointment. She's going to be really good for a war game. But the honest answer is because she's only in war game. And that's it. Yes, I never could add her down here. And that's it. Then, honestly, for me, she gets just a meh. Because if I'm not doing war game and I'm not trying to exceed, like, you know, Jester 1 rank to Hero rank, I don't need her. You really don't even need her to get to the Jester ranks. It would be nice. It's going to help out. But as we've seen with some of the newer units coming, they kind of even counter her a little bit too. So with Wargame, it's such an evolving meta. If you're going to be competitive in Wargame, you really have to go ham on every single new banner that comes out. Sucks. It's true. But that's how you get to the hero ranks. Uh, if you're just sated with like... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really lazy about it. If I get to King 1, I am happy. I would love to climb the Jester ranks for, you know, you know, personal pride beat my chest a little bit. But I rarely, like, care. I honestly get to about King 1 and I go, I got my Irish rewards. You know, it's like 30 hours to get to Jester 1. That's a lot of stress. Why would I bother? And I'm not getting to Hero because if you don't get to Hero immediately, you're not going to get there. So for me, climbing those ranks isn't worthwhile. Now, Record Buster is a slightly different situation, but if you needed to specialize for Record Buster, I'm also not going to give that a huge amount of credence. So, the honest answer is a unit like Haruhime, super worthwhile. She's going to be everywhere. She's going to be mandatory. She's going to be necessary. But let's get into the actual anniversary units, and I'm going to start actually over here with Elmina. Okay, Elmina has a self-earth attack damage 100%. That's really nice, but I wish it was all allies. Her, She's got an AoE... Uh, yeah, an AoE uh, plus forty percent and Earth resist down forty percent for all foes. That's an it's an uh, an AoE skill, and her single target is thirty percent uh, per strength attack buff. So she's really good all the way across the board. She's gonna be good everywhere. Her SA is physical resistance down sixty percent, and she gives her herself strength one twenty, which kind of takes a little bit away from her. And the reality is. She's great, but if you don't have her maxima broken, it's not the end of the world. I would love to maxima break her, but I'm honestly going to give her a B stat. A lot of people are probably upset about that, but hear me out. You don't have to have Elmina maxima broken. More Earth units are coming. More Earth units are going to be out there. She'll be a huge asset to your team if she is maxima broken. But is it mandatory? I think the AoE 40%, Earth Resist down 40% are really going to be enough to kind of bring someone else in, especially considering she doesn't get a percentage 
on her essay. So I think within six months or so, she's most people are going to relegate her to a sack anyway. So for me, great unit. Would love to have a maximum broken, but I don't think it's mandatory. That said, I am going to maximum break mine. So full, 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 uh, full disclosure. I am maximum breaking mine for the least of the time being. Now we're going to talk about Yuri. Strength, magic, dex, wind resist, critical, and penetration rate all down 40%. Great sack skill. Strength, mag uh, strength, agility, and all ailment resistance plus 70%. I think that's that's self. No, uh, that's a self skill. I didn't note it there, but it's a self skill. Also, in his uh, extra action, gives himself wind attack damage and ailment cure. So even if he has an ailment, he'll cure himself. That's huge. Huge. 80% per wind resistance debuff. Este is endurance and physical resist down 60%. Uh, notice that that kind of overlaps a little bit um, with Elmina and gives himself a percentage buff on wind. I hate to say it, for all those reasons, I'm going to give Yuri an A stat. I think he's a really solid unit. I think he's absolutely fantastic. I think he's going to be good all the way around. Uh, and I do think he's one of those units you really need to have Max Lima broken. Am I going to use him on, all the time? Probably not. But when I use him, I'm going to love him. He's going to be amazing. Uh, Gallimus. AoE and single target damage 40%. Stun resistance 100%. That right there is one of the best sack skills in the game. That stun resistance, well, we've got like we've got uh, units right now that do three, three different ailments. That is such an incredible skill to have. Problem is, his biggest issue is he gets no percentage boost on his single target. His SA is physical resistance, earth resistance, and and uh, ailment seventy percent. So he's his SA is kind of meh. Honestly, kind of meh. Um, good sack unit. Fantastic all the way around. Um, I don't know, guys. Uh, so I do love the physical and earth resistance uh, debuff. I think that's slightly better than what both Mikoto and... I'm sorry, Mikoto. What both Elmina and Yuri do. Um, I'm going to give him an A stat only because he has two things he does on his uh, essay, but he doesn't get an essay percentage boost. Though that stun resistance is huge, absolutely huge. I think for a lot of like Wrecker Buster and even War Games teams, he's going to be an absolute asset. I think he's going to basically solo uh, by himself take stun resistance com or stun completely out of the realm of, uh, of War Game for a bit of time. Maybe not forever, but for a bit of time. Um, Fianna. We got to talk about Fianna. Fianna is an absolute 100%. S stat, you gotta have her maximum broken. I maximum broke mine immediately. She's amazing. Strength, magic, endurance, and dex, and agility, and SA, all 33% for all allies. Buff and debuff plus two on her extra actions. Single target damage is 100% per uh, per SA uh, buff. And remember, we're gonna SA buff on the adventure in the assist side. So she's really, really, really good on that. SA is uh, her SA does all attack damage. All, all attacks, all, all opponents, 100% per SA buff. So basically takes her, her single target skill, turns it into an AoE skill. It's nutty. It's absolutely nutty. Um, SA buff with... Uh, you, basically gives you some more SA buff, gives yourself MP heal, uh, adds two additional actions on her extra SA. She's, she's nutty. She's absolutely bonkers. If you do not have uh, her maxed out, you gotta have her maxed out. She's the first S stat unit that you absolutely must MLB without question or doubt. Okay, brings me to Helga. Uh, Helga's a unit that I've been I've had a love hate relationship with. Uh, thunder resist down forty percent is really good, but we haven't had a huge amount of thunder units in the game. That said, I'm gonna give her an extra point only because we're starting to get more thunder units in the game like immediately as of Wednesday. 40% HP heal is great, 40% HP regen on top of that. Agility and physical resistance down 40% is going to be really nice for war game. 90% per physical resistance debuff um, on your opponent, on her single target skill. Her SA, is, her SA kind of sucks though. 60% slow and 40% stun. So 
if you go up against like Galamis, slow is what it is, but she is more of like an ailment unit with, you know, some serious HP regen. I like her a lot, um, but honestly, do you need to have her maxed? On ailment units, you really don't have to have ailment units maxed, so I'm going to give her a B stat. And remember, this is not necessarily like... This is like how important is the unit to max them a break. All right. This really is more or less what that is. So your S's and your A's, you probably do want to max them a break. Uh, your B's, is, it is what it is. Um, personally, for me, anyone B or greater, I am going to MLB before they're gone. So, you know, take that at, at whatever value you want to give it. But this is where we stand so far. Now, Lazar. You guys know I've been, I've been, I've been, Lazar's an S. Lazar's 100. The, the, the Earth Lazar is, is insane. Earth Lazar is a nutty, insane unit. Uh, he plagued me when he came out, and I'm so glad he did, because I did maximum break him. Earth resist down 40%, single target uh, down 30%, or single target damage, I guess, up 30%, both debuffs. Debuff plus two turns on his second uh, second action. Gives himself Earth 100, uh, 100%, and... Uh, and single target damage, 120% per strength and physical resistance buff skill. He also gives himself, gives everyone 120% strength on his SA. That means that Lazar is one of those units that you don't necessarily need the new Haruhime. If you're running a pure strength team, you'll be fine with him by yourself. You don't need Haruhime at that point. He's fantastic. That first Lazar, the, the, the very first Lazar we got, that Earth Lazar, got a maximum of breaking. If you haven't, if you got gnome tickets, go for it. Okay? Now, well, before I get too much further in this, a lot of people are going to be like, but you brought this out way too late. And the honest answer is yes, I kind of did. But let me explain, guys. If you finish up your heroic trials, if you just get the points out of your heroic trials, if you go finish up uh, all the farming of all the events, after that, you're still going to have a week, an entire week, to determine which units you want out of the heroic trials, which units you want out of the exchanges, which units you want out of all those other things. So, you still have another week and a half to decide, or a week and, and a day, to decide what you're going to do with all that stuff. So, finish your farming, and if you still want to go back and use this as a, as a reference guide, absolutely fantastic. Also, guys, this is an opinion piece. This is 100% an opinion piece. If you have a different opinion, I'm going to put a link down below to the actual uh, list here. Go ahead and share it on the Discord. Join the Discord, share it. I, you know, give your opinions by all means. Everybody's opinion is valid in this situation. Maybe you're somebody who absolutely hates the new Haruhime because you're, I don't know, demented. But, <laughs> you know, that's your opinion. And maybe, maybe someone else shares that same opinion. I mean, I guess in that situation, opinions can be wrong, but whatever, it's your opinion. This is an opinion piece. If you want to share your opinion, join the Discord, use the uh, use the Damachi uh, uh, tabs, use the link, and go ham. Um, I'm sure somebody's going to be very mad about one of the rankings. I'm sure somebody's already mad about one of the rankings up there. So that's my little disclaimer. So getting back into it, we're going to talk about the Light Lazar. Uh, strength and magic and penetration down 40% allies uh, so all allies heal strength light physical resist and magic resist 40% self defense buff 40% per each so self defense buff and on his extra action does 40% uh, per heal buff still single target attack 90% single target I think I've, I've wrote this down wrong I think I've got his stats wrong I was half asleep when I wrote this one uh, anyway 90% single target per heal buff. Now, the downside with that, the biggest downside with that is that you're not really doing a heal buff on the assist side. I mean, yes, you could, but it's not very common. But that 90% damage is insane. Though, his SA, all allies light attack damage 100%, is really, really good. I often, for any kind of light situation, I often use the two Lazars together. And it's, it's a great combo. Magic resist and physical resist down 60%. This dude is an absolute A-tier unit. I love this unit a lot. I use him frequently for any light situation. He's going to be great. Um, and I will kind of put that caveat on there. He is for light units. But we got so many light units during the anniversary. I think it's well worthwhile. I think light is definitely one of those top-tier categories all over again. So, once again, my opinion. 
Melia. I took a lot of heat for early uh, opinions on Melia, and I kind of still stand by him. She does uh, agility, physical resist, guard rate, and counter rate all down 35% th uh, on your opponent, which is a really good debuff on your opponent. Strength, magic, and dex down 45%, which is really nice. Single target doesn't get a percentage boost, but it does get ailment cure for all allies. And her SA is wind attack damage 100% for two turns and wind resist down 60%. Now, that is a great skill. I'm not going to lie. That is a great skill. But we do already have wind attack damage 100% several times over, which kind of devalues that in my opinion. Uh, ailment cure, strength magic 45%. She's a unit that if you want to use both those skills, you almost ha you either have to Maxima Break her or be willing to um, debuff her health and, and try to get two turns out of her. She's really, really, really good. I think the Ailment Cure is nice, but I think there's plenty of other units that do Ailment Cure. So unless you're running, like... Uh, she's an AoE for the win team. I mean, I, I do like her. I see a lot of uses for her. I kind of dogged on her early, but the problem is we don't have a lot of wind units at the moment. We didn't get a lot of wind units with the uh, the anniversary. We don't have a lot of wind units in there. I'm going to give her a B stat. I'm only going to give her a B stat because she does do two really good things, even though she doesn't get a percentage boost. She does do wind attack damage 100%, and she does a 60% debuff on wind on her SA. If you max limit break her, great. She'll be great for the win team. But at the moment, I don't think it's necessary. And for me, I think if I wait a few months on her and I start building up my collection of gnome tickets and then we get some win units, I don't know, November, December, then I max limit break her, I think it'll be a lot happier, personally. So she's low on my list to max limit break. In fact, I'm going to even move her down to C staff for that very good reason. Because I think I can wait, save my gnome tickets, and max limit break her when she's necessary. Sounds crazy. I think she's going to be of far more use on the rerun. Fight me in the comments. I would love to hear an argument to that. But I think she's going to be of a lot more use by the time she reruns. Personal opinion. Could be wrong. Personal opinion. Now, Blue Eyes Finn. Blue Eyes uh, Finn. 60% self heal and HP regen. Strength decks. Physical and Magic Resist and AoE Elemental Buff Removal. 30% HP damage with 30% uh, MP heal and 5% KO save on his extra action. Single target damage 90% for self buff skills. Single target damage and uh, on uh, sorry on, on his SA uh, AoE 90%. So basically, once again, his SA becomes an AoE skill. 30% uh, MP heal, 5% KO save once again. I really adore this unit. Um, I use him a lot. He's fantastic. I am only going to give him an A, though, for the exact same reasons that I only gave the Light Lazard A. Am I going to use him all the time? Probably not. But any, once again, anyone in the A stat, I think, is really important to MLB. And I think it's going to be really, really, really critical. I just don't think they're on the level of an S clear. Like, those two up units up there, you're going to use all the time. You're going to use both of them regardless of what team they're on. A, though, that you kind of have to be running their element. They'll be fantastic for their element. You got to maximum break them for their element, but you're only running with them with their, with their element. That's the big difference. B starts to peter off. C becomes question rates. I haven't gotten a man or a disappointment yet, which is really nice for the anniversary, I will say. Red Eyes Finn. 10% KO save uh, on his... Uh, we've talked about that skill a lot. We use that... We use that a lot uh, during the EX missions. 10% KO save removes physical and magic resistance on his extras. So all physical and magic resistance buffs are moved on his extra uh, attacks on your opponents. Light resistance down 40%. AoE and single target resistance down 30%, which is super nice. Single target 20% per strength, magic, strength, magic, endurance, agility, and SA. That's five items right there. That can easily easily become a 100% hit easily become a 100% hit um now his SA is single target it's 100% per each strength uh buff skill then he gives physical resistance down 60% and allies 66% SA charge little low on the list there uh I hate to I hate to admit he's single target he's really good but he is single 
target on his SA. Now, the light resist is down 40% in the AoE and single target uh, uh, damage is really nice. Um, it's tough to not give him a B. It's really tough not to give him a B because he does a lot of really good things and he will absolutely save you. But he is single target, which means his uses are going to be fairly limited. I'm going to give him an A only because we did use him to great a great extent in one of our current fights. We did use him on the EX mission. He saves the team with that uh, that um, 5%. Uh, basically, if you don't know how that works, basically any unit that has 5% health or better gets one KO save, and that can really pull your team out of the fire. I believe this is the first unit that ever had 5%. Everyone's been 10% or even 20% or above. This is a huge power creep on that, and it is a life-saving power creep. This can really pull your team out of the fire if necessary. I'm going to give him an A. And I know that's going to be a bit controversial, but I'm going to give him an A. But that's all the more I can honestly give him. Now, now we've built a pyramid. Let's talk assists, okay? Ryulu. Ryulu, Ryulu does agility, penetration. Agility, and penetra agility down 20%, penetration down 30%. Also does an HP heal 80% and a magic physical and magic resistance 50%, but those are self skills. That's whoever she's tied to. That's not AOE. Um, so here's the deal with her. And those are on extra actions too. So you have to get attacked for those to go off. I like her, but she has one use and one use only. That is war game. And I've already said that any unit that is one use and one use only is instantly going to become kind of a meh in my book. Um, I did not maximum break her. I don't intend to maximum break her. I really have no interest in her. Now, if you are war games bound, I think she's going to be really, really, really stellar for you. For that reason, I'm going to put her in the B skill. I think for what she does, she's amazing. She's indispensable for war game. And that's the only thing that keeps her from going into C. So if you're war game, she's going to be like an A. If you're a war game man. But for me... I just I don't see it. I don't need her. And remember, for war game, you're really talking. Are you climbing the hero? Or are you climbing the hero ranks? Are you climbing the jester ranks? I don't even think you'll need her for the king ranks, to be honest. Opinion. Now, this is the the, the one where I'm probably going to sound like a bit of a hypocrite here. Uh, Felice, the the first uh, part one, Felice. Single target damage, 25%. Critical rate down 25%. Strength, magic, agility, dex, and endurance plus 10%. So here's why I'm going to give her a solid A and not an S. That 25% is a huge power creep. We've had 20% before. 25%, she's the first unit to introduce 25% into the game, at least in, in that single target damage. We just, I uh, think, just got an AoE 25%. Yeah, we do have... In AOE 25% and she's going to get the same stat. But. Also having critical rate down 25% is really nice. Having. Which means she's going to be useful. All over the place. Uh, strength. Magic. Agility. Dex. And endurance. So she's going to be really good to a tie to the uh, the Finn. That gets his 20%. Or sorry. Is it Finn? It's Finn. Uh, yes. The, the red eyes fin that gets the 20% boost. So they really go together. They make a phenomenal team. Phenomenal team. And so for the, all those reasons, I think she's a really good unit to maximum break. And hear me out on this. The reason I say that is because Finn, if you're doing, let's say, family events, if you're doing, you know, if you want to get top 500 in, in, in Record Buster and then peace out with what, like even a remotely decent score, tell us he's top 1,000 in Record Buster without even trying those two units together will get you some amazing iris for the next year for the next year you'll be able to run them on just any half-ass team like we did with the water team get a top 1000 maybe even a top 500 score if you've got good uh good cp levels and walk away with some fantastic iris they're gonna make a killer combo and for my free-to-play people out there mark my words on that 
Mark my words on that. I said the same thing last year with the water team, and it proved very true. Up to the anniversary, you could rank a top 500 score just about every single Record Buster without trying. They're the same combo, and so for that reason, I put a huge amount of value on her. Now, the Part 2 Felice. She's a huge power creep. Strength plus 25%. Counter rate plus 15%. I, I, I like what she does. I like her numbers. But I've been very critical about these units. And let me explain my criticisms. Okay, You don't often use a strength buffer like this. Usually anymore in this realm of the game, you use a strength buff that is then... Uh, you know, just applied to get the percentage boosts. Strength buffs are nice, but you don't often use a strength buffer by themselves. You're going to get a lot more value out of a unit that does strength 15 to 20 percent that also does, let's say, SA, SA gauge charging or, you know, uh, counter rates or anything like that. That Well, I say counter rates. She does counter rates, but does lots of other things. Like, you want a unit nowadays that has basically a paragraph for their... Uh, for their skill. She doesn't do any extra actions. She has no extra actions. She's just strength. She's just counter rate. She's meh. I, I mean, she, she is meh, except for the fact she's a power creep. The only thing stopping her from going right here is being a power creep. I don't think anybody has used her yet. And I don't think anybody really will use her going forward. I, if you did use her, you were probably making a mistake, and there's probably a better unit that did more things. Counter rate's good. Strength is good. But neither of those two are good to, to uh, by themselves. You need physical resistance will do so much more than strength buffing will, unless you're just rushing the team like crazy. She's for me. She's C. I, I I just don't. I can't put her any higher than that because I don't think anybody here really needs to max them or break her. Personal opinion. Now, I did say that, and I did put the other fleece up there for being a power creep. But let's continue on. The part three Felice is once again going to go up here. I think you really got a maximum break this unit. She does light and earth 25%, which is huge. That's insane. That's a crazy big number. Remember, she has two elements, and they're both the elements that we got huge buffs for in the anniversary. Uh, guard rate 20%, self strength and magic 20%. Remember I said you don't use a lot of like strength buffs because she has 20%. It's like a 5% difference and she does elements on top of it. That's just another reason. Like that instantly devalues her at least one notch, if not two. She's 5% less, but in two other respects, 25% more. The only thing she's lacking that this unit has is counter rate. And you're going to buff counter rate with some other assist. I don't see it, guys. So I really feel like the part one and part three Felices, I guess I'll, I'll key to or whatever, uh, are both A tier, must maximum breaks. But yeah, I, 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 I maintain my arguments on her. Elf, the last assist from the anniversary. Agility and critical rate, 15%. Self, strength and agility, 20%. There's another 20% strength. And it is to self. Two times. Single target. Now, this basically... Uh, the way his, his extra action works. He can get attacked twice. Twice. In, in uh, Per turn. For two turns. Well, it'll happen up to four times. So if he gets attacked twice in, in... It'll happen up to four times and he can do it twice per turn. So that means he can do it either once for four once for four turns, twice for two turns, or any combination thereof. You know, once, then twice for turn two, and then once again for turn three. Any combination thereof. Up to and including. Um really good skills. But kind of wargame exclusive. He's kind of wargame exclusive. And I don't know, guys. I, I do adore his extra action. I think, honestly, for his extra action, I'm going to go ahead and give him B, B tier. But here's the problem with giving him B tiers. I kind of have already said A tiers are like the must maximum breaks. The C tiers are like 
you know, don't even bother. And the B tiers are like, they'll be fine at, you know, 60% or plus one, plus two. Um, with an assist, you either, you either go all or none. With rare exception. But he's the rare one that you actually can go partially into and then let him die off on the, at, you know, turn one, turn two after he gets that skill off. So I think he's right there. I think he'll be fine at plus one, plus two if you use him strategically. But I don't see him being used a lot. Now, that said, he, I believe, unless I'm mistaken, in Wargame, he was really popular. But it is just Wargame. You're never going to use him outside of Wargame. Or if you do, you're using his extra action, and you'd be just fine to do that for one turn and then walk away. I don't know, guys. That's, that's, that's my feels on him. I think he's beat here at absolute best. All right. Now we're going to get into the uh, the extra units. So I'm going to start off with Ryu. This is the Ryu that we got for the, the extra part one stuff. She does Thunder Attack, uh, Thunder Attack down, I'm sorry, Thunder Resistance, 40%. AoE damage plus 35%. Very nice. And adds two additional actions for uh, buffs. Remove self debuffs and uh, she does stun. I believe it's 100% stun. It doesn't give a percentage. It just says she does stun and then 40% MP heal on herself. SA is thunder resistance down 50%. AoE resistance down 50%. We just got some more thunder units. So she is actually coming back into prominence. I was going to give her a meh. I'm going to upgrade her to B only because, only because, number one, she's not time limited. So you could max her out later on down the road. You don't have to max her right now. Number two, and here's the big, big kicker with her. We just, it, the only thing that saves her from being meh is the fact we just got some thunder units and we're probably going to get more. If it weren't for those units that we were just in getting here shortly, I put her down to meh. In fact, I'm going to put her to C. Because I don't think this incoming banner is a banner you want to go ham on. So I'm going to put her back down to C. I kind of talked myself into it. I don't think she's really necessary yet. Uh, in fact, I didn't I didn't, uh, I didn't, didn't even summon for her or for uh, Mikoto. Mikoto is a, a three times null physical attack. I'm sorry. Buff plus three, no physical attack times two. My apologies, I wrote that down weird. So she she does three, uh, basically adds three to whatever buff skill is currently on your your team. Nulls two physical attacks. Does physical and magic resist down thirty five percent, which is really good. Uh, but her single target has no percentage boost. Her SA is a hundred percent per dex. Dex skill. I mean, I guess we have units that do dex. Uh, once again. The single target, single target, I will emphasize. Uh, Felice, but she's more of an AoE. And as you will see in, coming up next, the uh, the uh, uh, Seer, Seer unit doesn't do dex. And she's the big AoE buff. So I'm going to give her a solid meh. So I gave Ryu the time of day. I'm not giving Mikoto the time of day. Sorry, Mikoto. You're not a disappointment. You're just kind of forgettable. Now, Seer is no ailments four times four, but she is an AOE power creep. Big AOE power creep. Now the caveat to this is I did not I did not max on my break mine. But but we get enough of uh you know enough prison bonds in this day and age, I will max them a break mine before too terribly long. But the extra actions aren't terribly great. But being an AoE um being an AoE power creep for me kind of seals her being an a class i've got no choice but to put her there um she'll be good just everywhere you go so she's the first non-time limited unit non-time limited to be a must max limit break bell and hestia 
Physical and magic resistance plus 45%. So good defensive buff there. Strength attack damage down 40%, 45%. 50% HP regen for one turn. And three extra actions mid-fire magic attack. Also strength magic and magic resistance down 40%. Single target damage 20%. Her magic and agility buff. Mm. So to get the best out of the single target, and that's only to make it on par with last year's units, you need an agility buff. SA is self, magic, and fire 100%, and that's where it starts to peter off. So, I do like the first two skills. I think they'd be good as a sack. But all in all, I'm going to give them a map. I don't. I think they're just going to get outclassed so quickly. Bell and Hesty, I think, are just going to get outclassed so fast. I think they're going to disappear and just get forgotten before too terribly long. I think they're just meh at best. They're not disappointments, but they are meh. Finally, we've got Lily and Marie. Now, I've talked about Marie quite a bit. 30% HP regen, seal resistance plus 100%, and one turn KO save. I like her, but at best, at absolute best... Uh, I would love to say Max Limit Breaker. I just don't know how good the seal resistance is. Is the KO save enough? It is an extra action, but is it enough? Finally, we do have uh, Lily. Physical and magic resistance and counter rate and guard rate and heal all down 35%. With allies, all those stats plus 35%. Water resistance down 40%. She starts to lose a little bit there because we've had so many that are water uh, units. SA gauge. Strength, magic. I'm sorry. Her SA is strength, magic, penetration, and critical rate plus 75%, which is questionable at absolute best. Her single target's only a 40% buff, too, based on her agility, on your opponent's agility debuffs. She's solo, solo, just made for Wargame and nothing else. And even then, I think she's probably not even the best for that, but she will be good for that. But only good for the water team. Though, she, though, though her debuffs are great. Her debuffs are fantastic. I think, she, I think her debuffs alone save her from being meh. But you'll never use her in Record Buster. You'll never use her in uh, se uh, 7th Zone. You'll never use her in anything aside from War Game. And even then, it's all about her debuffs. It's not about her damage. You're probably going to sack her. You're probably going to be like one and done with her. You put her on the front lines. If she dies off, she brings it someone strong. Which means you don't need a maximum breaker. That's my tier list, yo. Melia and Part 2 uh, Felice are the only two down here in C tier. B tier, it's entirely up to you. I like those units. I actually did limit break um, uh, Helga, and I don't regret it. I like her a lot, but I have to admit her limited uses. Um, Alf, I'm going to max limit break just because of reasons. Um, I don't know, guys. Let me know your take down below. Like, comment, share all the good stuff, and I'll catch you all in the next one.